see the hot shot. So probably going to follow that up with a last band Zareth here, and we're just going to let it ride. Oh! So Needle is open, and so is Zareth. All right. Those are the ones I had my eye on here. Counterlogic Gaming now. No jungle bans, no AD carry bans, no support bans. So no top lane bans either. Like, wait, this is really six mid lane bans, isn't it? All right, so I just like listen to all the other I said roles. at least four. Yeah, you got that <laughs> one too. Six now, okay. okay. Kobe's on her own. Well, okay, and he picked up for the support role. All right, that was the first pick going. But yeah, every other lane, the pick of the litter here for this, every player. Yeah, this is uh, this is definitely going to be a unique fan phase here. I don't think we would see this sort of fan phase with any other two teams. Mm -hmm. uh, but it leaves so much open for these guys. What does Link jungle? Like, I, 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 I have actually never <laughs> seen Link jungle before. Um, I, know, I know that CLG as a um, company is like, they're okay with having their mid laners jungle. Big Bat mm -hmm. LP, Hotshot, uh, yep. pretty good examples right there. Chouster uh, did it. Chouster, Used to mid lane. also mid lane. So they're, <laughs> they're a pretty big fan of just letting that one fly because they feel like a lot of the same skill sets apply. Mm -hmm. But man, um, Elise is already off the board. That's a huge, huge priority pick for a lot of people. The other high priority ones, Lee Sin and Vi. Now, yep. Lee Sin. If you have not played him very, very recently, you probably don't want to use him in a competitive match like this. Yeah. Link could very well have played Lee Sin, though, because a lot of solo laners love using that champion. Um, but also, the Vi, I think, uh, pretty high priority. Now, instead, though, we're getting the Kha'Zix in here. Now, we've seen Kha'Zix top, Kha'Zix jungle, and Kha'Zix mid. Of course, you've got an Annie plus Jinx lane for the bottom, though. That's a powerful one. I don't know if you guys have seen the montage, but Double have used to be really bad at landing Jinx's <laughs> skill shots. Probably gotten better since, though. Probably. So, like you said, this Kha'Zix is a really wild card because it's a very popular jungle um, right now. Especially benefited, I think, by the last patch where the gold on the white went up. Mm -hmm. That's like his favorite camp to go after because yeah. it's already isolated and you can burn it down really quickly. It's actually one of the most value um, that you have in a single camp. Yeah. And it's just easy for him to for him to destroy that thing. So. Uh, could easily be a Kha'Zix in the jungle there for Link. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, already the, uh, the some more like really high profile picks coming through for the Gintas though as well. Lucian, Leona added in. CLG, they're just clicking a bunch of random stuff, so we'll deal with that later. But Lucian, Leona up against Jinx, Annie. We keep seeing these four over and over and over again. These are like the really popular support AD carries. Liking it a lot. CLG though, they get to lock in the Needly. And they've got Zack coming back. <laughs> so Zack there, Nien uh, did play a lot of Zack back when, uh, before the recent nerfs and uh, mm -hmm. changes to him. So he's definitely comfortable on the champion. Yeah. And it does bring what they were lacking before, the long range initiate plus uh, a nice beefy tank that can just cause havoc in the team. Wow, sort of buying time here for Kazix to work his magic and try and jump around the outside. I mean, Annie's yeah. like this, hard engage that they're going to have, and then there's kind of the continued disruption that they want to keep uh, from Zack. It's a whole bunch of damage in the lineup, too. Every single oh, yeah. one of those guys is some kind of moderate to extreme damage threat. And you're like, all right, Nian, hopefully you can tank well enough on Zack, or maybe it's Link. And Dignitas, Skara is on Katarina. All right. This is going to be a very exciting game because Hotshot Classic right here, he's going with the Nidalee, and it's gonna be versus one of Scar's favorite champions. So it's yeah. these two very iconic mid lane players in League of Legends, just competitive history, yeah. going up against each other on some of their favorite champions. And I love that, like the ban phase was aimed at a bunch of like, things you expect to see, but not the signature champion for each of those mid laners. If you're the lane that anything they wanted, and the two big name champions for those two mid laners got left open. I'm just happy this is the lineups because as <laughs> as a fall of the North American team for so long, like those are the champions I want to see when these guys face off. Yeah, and no. Needle and Cat, it's gonna be great. So both teams have resets. We have we have talked about this as yeah. well. So the team fights are gonna be really snowbally. Whoever is able to get the initiation, I feel like you know if a Coon lands or if a Leon is able to set up. Um, her solar flare, mm -hmm. then it's going to be huge for Dignitas because they definitely have the damage also to back up that pick with a kill and get Scar the reset. Meanwhile, CLG, you already talked about their damage. They're mm -hmm. looking for pretty much the same thing, hoping to get Kha'Zix rolling. I'll we'll see if they can do it, guys. As we load into the game, let's take one last look at who you voted to take the last win of the day. And according to LLEsports.com, 70% of you think that Counter Logic Gaming 
Going to move their mid laner to the jungle and defeat Dignitas. A lot of Hotshot fans there, maybe? I don't yeah. know. Just CLG in general. Everybody is excited to see Double Lift and Afro back together. Mm -hmm. We talked about you know how uh, popular these specific bottom lane picks have been. Since there are no bottom lane bans, you know, both teams got to have one of these power combos. Yeah. And there it's gonna be all kinds of fun. An explosive game here, a lot of damage on both sides. And get ourselves into the game. CLG on blue, Dignitas on red. Here we go, game six of the day. And I've also seen a lot of interviews that CLG have done. A uh, huge part of them is if Doublelift ever does get Jinx, you know, one of his favorite champions. Just one or two early kills on him is going to be exactly what they're looking for. So probably we'll have uh, some jungler attention, is that we call it, down bottom. Most likely. Since uh, there's not as many wards down bottom in the new meta with everybody starting these Doran's items. As you can see, once again, both supports starting Doran's here. And uh, we'll have to see. You know, Crumbs definitely has that in his mind as well. Nobody likes to see Double Lift getting the early kills. But... Yeah. Like we said as well, the mid lane, very exciting matchup. It's going to be a fun one. And uh, Okay, here we go. Guys just standing. This is the lineup we see for pretty much every single game, but they get to the front of the river and say, okay, I'll see you if you come in to invade me, and I can run away if you show up. It's kind of like the same old dance over and over. Everybody lines up, and then uh, 30 seconds before, they all drop their trinket wards in the river. So for a nice, you know, First 30 seconds, we got so much vision in the, in the river, and oh, the junglers are done with their double buffs. Now it goes black, and yeah. everybody holds their breath. Where is the first jungle gank going to come? Because it's kind of a race. Both of these junglers are really potent uh, gankers. Elise definitely, I think, has the early upper hand just because CC in her kit is hard CC. Mm -hmm. um, but Kha'Zix, with that isolation damage, can bring a lot of extra execution to your gank. So yeah. both of them definitely have the potential to grab that first one. I'll see what these guys end up doing with it. Double lift going back to his duo lane. In fact, most of the games today, aside from, I think, just TSM versus Cloud9, we've had the default two on two lanes down here uh, in general. Nian's going to help Link out with his blue buff. That should be pretty safe. Looks like Link's starting with Q there to get the damage output. Get rid of his golem pretty safely. Nian done helping. Going to go to his top lane. Mid laner's already fighting, and in fact, both these junglers are starting the top side of the map. And like we said, all those wards in the river were dropped around the 140 mark or something like that, so they only last one minute since they're those weak trinket wards, and they do go dark pretty much around the time the junglers finish their second buff. Uh, we'll have to see. It looks like Kha'Zix will be ending his route on the bottom side of the map as well as Elite. So heavily loaded in the bottom side of the map. And of course, by the time they get there, the supports are going to have their CCs available. All the lockdown. Leon will hit six. Annie, of course, has hers already. So, explosive. That's actually a really good point. Didn't go over this game again. But uh, with these popular bottom lane picks, the level two rush is so important. Leona and um, Lucian were able to shove the lane very quickly. Um, so they'll get it slightly faster. But they are so close to the turret that they'll probably not want to pull that aggression off by themselves and wait for some extra help. And well, Elise just now done with her blue buff. We saw Nien and Cruiser actually in a brawl early on. Cruiser getting the better of it really quite nicely in the end. Actually losing a lot of his bloblets. But Crom's actually going to go through the jungle. He'll spot Link over at the Pound wave him. camp. Can he get the... Oh, he flashes, but the cocoon misses anyway. Link forced to jump away. There comes the repel. Not enough damage. Crumbs going to have to back away from this one, but nearly taken off his head. Definitely mind gamed him right there. Crumbs was so excited to land that cocoon. Goes for the flash cocoon. It was a good aim, you know, going for the exit, but Link, yeah. really good move right there. Just keeps his calm, not even having to blow his flash. So even though he was the one in the hot spot right there, he is comes out ahead. Didn't have to blow his flash, and that's going to be really hit, really big, especially for this top lane. Oh, this is good stuff, but Elise already looking down for the bottom lane here. Double if who's going to look? No, it's going to be for Cruz the Bruiser first up here in the top lane. Damage coming across, Ignite on a cruise. Oh, he's going to flash away. Link goes in. Can he get the Q, the W, the damage up? But one more attack to go. The slow. <gasps> he's still not dead. Are you serious? CLG not going to capitalize on that one. Cruiser just going to recall a style. He got to use his flash for that jump, but the execute wasn't enough to finish it there. Yen can't add very much damage. This early level of Zac not able to get in there. Meanwhile, the simultaneous gank down bottom of Crumbs didn't mm -hmm. land either. And no summoner spells burned at all. Double lift actually had brought cleanse just in case for all the CC. Didn't have to use that whatsoever, so CLG's bottom lane safe. That's an interesting debate, actually, among a lot of uh, the AD players. 
Mm -hmm. When you go against, you know, an, a lane like this, which is Leona or Annie, that have this hard CC, mm -hmm. would you would you opt for the cleanse to get out of the CC so that you can then avoid the further follow up damage, or just go with the barrier anyway, since yeah. you're going to take a big chunk of damage from the initial spell? This matchup definitely cleanse because I can't oh. dodge Leona's CC. And speaking of which, Kiwi Kid goes in onto Aphromo here. Does have the flash available? Stun's going to come across as well. The repel goes in, but there's not much follow up here. Crumb's getting stunned, and Link has shown up crumbs goodbye and kiwi kid now the one forced to run away no stun just yet for after the flash in still no stun coming across one more attack to go will do it double it with the zap not gonna land i'm a cutie pie runs away as well that was close beautiful sidestep from kiwi kid right there i mean you were expecting the zap to come out but nonetheless that just saved his life good job salvaging uh something there from that good turnaround there link came in for the counter gank that's the extra damage that we talked about. He doesn't have the hard CC that Elise does, but mm -hmm. if he can get the jump on you, really nice burst. Yeah, and he's already opening up with a long sword early on to his build, so I'm guessing Elder Lizard pretty early for Link. We'll see where he actually goes with this one, though. He's seen all kinds of weird builds. Beautify just clearing up at his turret, but yeah, Link got the better of that early jungle game. And we haven't talked, we haven't really visited this mid lane because honestly, Nidalee mid lane is not that exciting to watch until she gets her cougar form because she's just sort of a sustained monster and tries to stay in the lane, avoid any ganks that come her way. Very hard to take her down that early, especially if you're on barrier. But I'm a little bit surprised that Skara um, has been able to get that uh, little bit of CS lead because it's a bit more difficult to get in there with Cat. The range yeah. advantage is on Hotshot's side. Skara's just been chain pushing over and over again. Every time I look at the mid lane, it's Hotshot underneath his turret because Skara is just trying to use the AoE to his advantage. We're seeing that happen actually right here. One minion to go down, and you're going to see Hotshot still stuck underneath. But level 6 now unlocked for these guys means Cougar Form can up with the wave clear, but also Skara got a whole bunch more kill pressure. Skara also, in this matchup here, is maxing the Q instead of uh, his W. So... Because he knows he's not going to be in range of Hotshot that often, especially mm -hmm. for the early levels. Um, opting for that a little bit less total damage output and a little bit less speed from uh, his Sinister Steel. And just a bit more burst instead. So, Cruiser now actually pushing in the top lane. This guy, this matchup I should say actually, after Link gave a little bit of help there to knock down Cruiser, his matchup has stayed pretty equal over there. The AD carry lane as well, only seven apart for these guys. The Sight Stone, though, for Aphromoo versus Kiwi Kid getting some gold generation. Bit of a difference there. Cutie Pie jumped on, does have a summoner, but the engage goes on. Aphromoo down to half. The run away from Kiwi. He's still alive, though, pretty safely. No flashes available for the CLG bottom lane, and looks like Dig will be safe on this engage. Aphromoo trying to make the most of that blue buff that he was awarded uh, from, his, from his first blood there. He's going to be able to charge up his stun once again very quickly, which is something that is was the drawback to Annie, you know, mm -hmm. if she doesn't have a blue buff down in that bottom lane. But since he does, he's going to be able to spam both the shield. Oh, well, that wore out. <laughs> he was able I'll to. Stop. So, hey, has a full mana bar now, though, thanks to the blue buff. There so all is well. Double have taken a bit of poke, but Link is level 6, has evolved wings and maxed Q. I love that. Uh, something that Alex did in the mid lane back in the EU LCS earlier this week. Looks like he's going to go for Cutie Pie here because he's isolated. His isolator does have flash, but it might not matter. Down goes one. Kiwi Kid, tanky underneath his own turret. Link's still going for this one. Nope, he's going to jump away with the reset. But that is two for zero. This bottom lane, the center of attention for CLG. At, as we expected, I was talking about a couple early kills on double lift would be huge. He was a kill. And in this one, um, not even able to get a shot off, so no no assist for him even. Link just does so much damage, bursting him down right there. Able wow. to get it. Ian getting a knock up there, dropped dangerously low as well, but eating up some Bloblets and survives without proccing his passive. But Cruiser, he knows he's going to look for this one. Gets the Flame Breath, not enough damage though. Ian going to safely recall, but these guys have been uh, fighting back and forth. But staying, again, very equal down there. Yeah, and Yen still does have his Cell Division passive, so he'll revive under the turret, and it would be way too hard for he, he, or Cruiser to finish him off under the turret. Surprise, though, Cruiser did have Ignite up and just didn't want to proc the passive with it. Okay, Ooh. there we go. Red buff picked up by Crumbs. The Repel was... Or Red sure buff. Why. The Dragon buff. Yeah. Oh, I said Red buff? Close enough. Red team picks up the Dragon. Dragon kind of dragons are buff. lizards also, maybe? Yes. No, that's fair. Okay, good. I got it right after all. Good job. 
All right, thanks for the save. Double lift, Afremu, bottom lane, both level six now, and they've beat Kiwi Kid to that mark. This is a bit dangerous as Kiwi makes his way back down to this lane. Still no boots and no flash. This communication you can see in the pings on the minimap down here. Uh, both pings there from Afremu letting Link know that there was a ward in that tri bush. So Link hopped over that wall, ended up walking through it anyway. So he's been spotted out, but still, it was a good effort there from Afremu. He did communicate to his jungler. And speaking of the communication, Dig also picking Tribrush to say, look, Link came through here last time. Please make sure you're aware of this one. I don't want to die again. That's been okay so far. Skara building still just about seven minions above Hot Shadows when he can last it under the turret. That ward's going to go down. Oh, that was a nice ward, actually, seeing if the counter kick was there by Crumbs, and it was, so CLG backs out. It's actually a really risky ward to walk up and do. You can see how mm -hmm. quickly Double Lift ran up, snuck the ward in, and then jumped back because he was very close to getting stunned by Leona there. Uh, it did pay off, though, and they were um, tipped off to Elise's position. Okay, so safety for CLG. The interesting thing for me now is that Cruiser is starting to proxy farm the, the top lane minion wave. That's, a, that's kind of unlocking the white camp for him right now, and you're seeing him get a little bit more of a lead over Nian, who's stuck in his lane farming. It's not the biggest deal as long as Cruiser does not get jungle support while doing this. Yes, you can farm the minion wave behind the turret, but you're still only getting the same goal of that minion wave. If he's able to get the white, then it's a pretty good boost, but Nien can farm the minion wave just as well out here and sustain by grabbing all of his blobs because he's getting unharassed, or he's not getting harassed. And then he can rotate up and uh, take some double golems if he was bold enough. Yeah, well, Cruiser just really going for the jungle seals. He's doing wolves now as well, back and forth. Link's going to see him do... I don't know if you saw him, actually. Oh, down bottom, though. The rotation from Skara. Because he was able to shove the lane, now he gets to walk through the jungle, and he's timed this with crumbs. They're going to face check it. Uh-oh, CLG completely outnumbered. Look at the burst damage there. Tibbers does not keep him alive, and the reset is there for Skara, but he cannot jump in. Tibbers stunned him for long enough. Afro kept himself alive with a big giant bear. But that was still a good rotation by Dignitas, and that's actually, I think, the one advantage that I think Dig has as a team is they tend to be pretty good at forcing ganks and getting early game kills. It was definitely a really good roam by Skara right there. Um, timing it with uh, crumbs mm -hmm. in the jungle, able to pull it off, and you could tell that double left was getting real antsy. They, they felt like there was pressure coming. Just happens that he face checks the bush once again, runs right into that CC, and loses his life for it. You can see crumbs pretty happy yeah. with his work. Yeah, okay, well, it turns out that this pause is going to be pretty short-lived. Crumb's getting a pop-up that he couldn't quite get rid of, but he's gotten rid of it. Now we're going to be getting back into the game in the very near future. But yeah, so we get into this game, 2-1 to one in kills, CLG slightly in the lead, um, I guess in kill score overall, but we can get ourselves back into the game. And Dignitas, though, they've regrouped to the bottom lane, and they got a turret for their troubles. These guys are looking pretty decent. What he also got right there, Crumb's was able to smite that uh, Tibbers. Nice and extra 50 gold. Yeah. Love that. Afro got his pet a little bit too close. Well, let's see. Mid lane just chilling. CLG and Dignitas. Squaring away. Got our sounds back. That's good. Ain't happy to keep the farm going. But you can see that Cruiser is just still doing the same old thing over and over. Ooh. Getting his incremental advantage. So, oh my gosh, hot shot. Staying in the fight actually against Skara, just burning his this barrier. This is such a deep commitment from CLG because the rest of Dig are collapsing on them. Uh-oh, Hotshot, you've got to run your needle, but can you run far enough? Looks like there's no repel gonna land there for Crumbs. Doesn't quite get in range for that one, so Hotshot still able to get on the way out of this one. No, uh, just boots one, that's enough for him to get out here, okay. Dignitas actually holding on to a 1,000 gold lead, thanks in part to that earlier, uh, that turret kill. This is not bad for Dignitas, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it was a good effort there by Link and Hotshot. They were aware that the bottom tower just going down. Uh, Dignitas were probably going to rotate up through the jungle. They wanted to go for the kill on Skara first to see if they could grab it and then rotate up. But even though they weren't able to get it, it just cost Link his flash to escape. And then Hotshot has so many highlight reels of him just running circles around people on Nidalee. Yeah. They don't even chase him up through the jungle. But, you know, talking of Hotshot, though, he's got his uh, Athena's Unholy Grail done, but Skara has got a Deathfire Grasp in the inventory there. First item rush for Katarina. So, single target burst. We had it from Kha'Zix. Link's, Link is going to be scary, but Skara on Katarina, just the same. 
Yeah, a lot of uh, heavy damage builds coming out here. Like you said, uh, Link on Kha'Zix going for the Spirit of the Elder Lizard there, which is a very efficient AD item. If you are going to run an AD jungler, really recommend picking that one up. Uh, that plus the Brutalizer are just two really nice, uh, well-synergized items. Looks like he's going for maybe Merc Treads next, though. Worried about the CC available from the rest of the dig roster. These mid laners still squaring away, clearing minions back against each other. Uh, Crumbs are sweeping away this pink ward very nicely. The dragon coming up soon. And dig seem already pretty well poised here. They have control over this area. They swept all the enemy wards away for the most part, and they're creeping up ready to get their own control. Now, Hotshot has been able to secure blue buff, so they have the ability to um, to sustain in that mid lane and continually throw out spears. He should be able to keep up with the pressure now from Skara. As you can see there, DFG just used for some harass, but only two heals, and Hotshot doesn't even know what happened. Yeah, he's going to be all right with this one. Of course, the cooldown should come back right around the time Dragon does respawn, so no permanent losses for Skara either. You're seeing crumbs wait around in the wings. The rest of the bottom lane actually going up as well. But these guys are going to walk by a ward from Dignitas. There they go. They're going to move on forward. Can crumbs land the cocoon? No, it's going to be a flash from Hotshot. He's going to be saved. A lot of spells burned there by Dig, but still, flash a giant cooldown. And the pressure's now to the mid lane right here. Yeah, very good here, uh, move by Dig. They're rushing up the mid lane because there was two members of CLG down bottom. Afro was actually with double lift, just farming by themselves. And they get the turret before CLG are able to make the full rotation up from that bottom lane. There we go. Great play there by Dignitas. Thir sorry, 1,700 gold in the lead for them, but Dragon is back up, and CLG actually on the inside track here. And the whole time, Doublelift has been pushing that bottom lane, and that turret is losing health rapidly. You're seeing it go down in one more attack, and that rotation basically turned into not much of anything. CLG are ready to go for this Dragon. I guess both teams are. So they're able to answer with the turret first. Now they just have to wait around, throw out as many spears as they can, because like we talked about, the blue buff on Hotshot is going to allow him uh, objective control just by the fact that he can continually throw those spears out. And it, once two of them land, uh, a huge chunk onto one person is going to be enough to shove them off of the objective. Dragon down already means that CLG are going to get back in time to defend their turret. And it was a great pickup from them, evening up the gold. This is tied mm -hmm. game once again. Wow, and Dignitas as well, giving a lot of respect to CLG. You saw them get the inside track in the mid lane. Had minions still left to push that second turret and said, no, we're going to give you the space. You could have jumped on us. We're going to back off instead. Now this mid lane turret under siege, and QDP is forced to wave clear this. See you could still take the turret if they're not too gun shy. The wave clear is not amazing there for Dignitas either. They just have the culling, and since that's already used, only a couple more hits necessary on the turret. CLG get another outer. Very well played, CLG. Just picked up two turrets in a row plus the dragon. That was the last 45 seconds in recap for these guys. CLG now look for the top lane, still as a group of five, and Dignitas did not see the rotation. Lucian's recalling Katarina and Leona back in base. CLG completely on top of their map movements right now. Yeah, they want to get the third outer turret before Dignitas can react. Cruiser does get uh, knocked up a little bit there by Nian, but Afromu's not in the area to follow up, so they'll let him go and just take the global gold. Nice stuff right here, and Dignitas now forced to just sweep away these minions but CLG's got a whole bunch of gold in a row. Now, what do they cash in on it with? Because they've got a whole bunch of items they could buy. All right, so the mid game here, moving forward, now that CLG has finished all of the outer turrets, they are probably going to start sweeping out uh, or swapping out a couple more of their trinkets, not just the support for the sweeper, because they want to have those off cooldown sooner. Ra oh, well. Cruiser's going to get some more aggression. Yeah, and unfortunately, speaking of off cooldown, his uh, dragon form now already burned. Forced to use Flash to get away from this fight. Lincoln Nian surely would have killed him if he didn't use that. So, a couple of cooldowns burned by Cruiser. CLG looks like they're in control now. We go back to the basic lanes. All right, so I would expect uh, a couple more sweepers to come out here because CLG, now that they have all the outer turrets down, they like to start extending their vision control. Because if they can do that, they can find spots for Hotshot to throw spears from in the Fog of War Ooh. so that Daniel Toss are not aware. And a couple of those landing will give them, like we talked about, the edge, uh, edge for the objectives. But this is a repeat gank. Uh-oh, Nian getting ignited as well. Very low on health. One more tick left. It's not going to split him into Bloblets. Nian gets out safely. Link shows up and says, yeah, never mind. No ganks happen. Great screen right there from Link. He just shows up to draw attention away from 
in the end, and they don't end up even proccing his passive. Wow, this turret is going to go down, though, so both teams going to get all three outer turrets here. That score is tied up. The kills, again, only a 2-1, to one. and if I recall correctly, I think it's one dragon apiece. These guys are splitting objectives very Ooh. well. The engage comes in, though. Aphromu dodging the Leona ultimate, but still getting jumped upon. Tibbers blocks the W from Cutie Pie. He's still chasing it as well, but there comes Katarina. Picks up one, picks up two, and CLG forced to run. Skara definitely a bigger force in the quick team fight right there. Hotshot came in just at the same time too, but Nidalee's strength is in the longer engages where she can throw repeat spears. Meanwhile, Skara able to burst down a kill and get the reset on the duo of Doublelift and Aphromu, who started the whole thing off mm -hmm. on a ward. They thought they were going to get a guaranteed engage. Aphromu flashing over the wall to Tibbers, Cutie Pie, but since Cutie Pie had a ward down, they saw this plan and they were able to bait it perfectly. Very well played by Dignitas in that entire thing. And to point out, Skara has all the kills here in the lineup. We wanted to see how he'd play on his probably most signature champion, and so far he is the carry force here and uh, a scary force in fights. Ooh, Nia, yeah, nice Q. That was sick. So that's a very popular ward. Uh, mm -hmm. For both these teams, I guess. Uh, Nian just placing that one there too to get the white, but it definitely has paid off for both of them. Uh, Cruiser forced to run in dragon form. Yeah, he's going to be safe. Shortest fight ever. Couple of jumps. Uh, looks like the leapfrog. Victor is Cruiser. He's number one. Jump, now, buddy. once we do move forward here, though, it's, since it's tied up, it's very interesting because we'll have to see if CLG can actually siege up. They're going to want to get the next blue buff for Hotshot. That's a really high priority for them. Because like I talked about in that jungle fight there, Scar has a bigger impact in those small confined areas mm -hmm. where they can burst somebody down. But Hotshot with these blue buffs that he keeps getting is going to be able to uh, siege up and they need to buy him some time to throw those spears. Yeah. That's why also those sweepers would help, so he could throw the spears from Fog of War, less chance of them being dodged. We'll, we'll see if they can do it, because right now, uh, CLG and the, uh, I was going to say Hotshot and the rest of CLG, starting to fall a little bit behind here. Of course, Hotshot wave clearing nicely. Blue buff is on him. They're looking for the push forward, but no one's cracked the tier 2 turret just yet. Looks like it's actually going to be CLG pulling all five members towards mid, but look at, look at Kiwi Kid. He's waiting in the wings. He could engage from across the wall. So, since... The flash of Aphromu is down. He's got a bit shorter range engage than Kiwi Kid does. Even though Kiwi Kid does not have his flash, Solar Flare, a little bit longer. And if he's able to land it well, which is difficult to be fair, uh, then they actually could start the fight off. And like I said, with so much damage on both these teams, mm -hmm. whichever one gets the good initiate, even just one second ahead, will be huge. And you know, thinking about it, these two supports are kind of racing right now to get Talisman of Ascension, actually. They're both at Nomad's Medallion. Uh, you've got a little bit more gold in the inventory of Aphromoo, but not by much. That could be a big deal as well. One turret, one dragon's going to swing that. And five more seconds on that dragon means that CLG, being able to put down all the wards leading up to the dragon, they've set this up very well. They have vision of the paths that Dignitas will take, and Hotshot can just thread his spears right down that, you can see, though, they're leaving the dragon so low. Smite War. And that's going to be Crumbs picking it up, and the fight might just be... Nope. CLG is like, okay, we'll give you dragon. We're going to back off. And that is a little bit trademark CLG. I remember them saying a good while back, we won't give away dragons if it means... Uh, we won't give away fights even if it means dragon. CLG might just re-engage. Crumbs taking a bit of damage. Link shows up. There's the repel. Going to get Crumbs to safety, but Nian might not be done with this one. Dignitas certainly running away. I, they're running away now, but man, that was a fearless charge by Dignitas. you got to yeah. give him credit for running straight up there to get that dragon. Did not hesitate. And Crumbs, with Elise, does have the advantage uh, in the Smite Wars because he's got that execute. So you can't lay it all on Link, even though he is new at the jungle. Yeah. Very, very, very hard to outsmite that Elise combo. But look at this move by CLG. They set up a giant minion wave top lane, and they're going for the turret right now. Cutie Pie cannot kill this minion wave by himself. And Dublin can't stay too long. He gets stunned, but cleanses away. No jump. That's why you take cleanse on Jinx. He was dead otherwise. Well, he, to be fair, he got himself into that position. Okay, it was yeah. a little bit too long at the turret, but you're right. He's able to get himself out of that <laughs> position as well. Corrected his own mistakes by summoner spell choices. Unfortunately, still 0 2 and 1. Not the best game for Doublelift right now. And the, the slack is actually on, I would say, Link right now. He's kind of doing the best of anyone on his team. Problem is, he's still only got one offensive item. So, we'll probably be looking for a stun. If you're looking from CLG's perspective here, mm -hmm. they're looking for a stun onto Skara 
or Cutie Pie. Uh, both would be amazing, uh, yeah. but they'll definitely take either one because Scar has built all damage here. If they just hold him in place for a very, very small amount of time, mm -hmm. uh, they can easily burst him down, and that would be the giant threat that, threat that Dignitas has to offer here. So both teams looking to lock down the damage dealers as usual. Well, CLG definitely still on the siege right now, exactly where they want to be, but Hotshot very low on mana all the same. Double lift hitting this turret down a little bit. They're going to toss with their low wave. They're still getting rid of minions decently. Blue buff is up, so I expect CLG to just retreat from this one. They, they can't sustain a siege without those continuous spears. Uh, they definitely want to secure that one for Hotshot before returning to that situation. And you can see them aggressively sweep away the mid lane to basically make that next one happen. Clear that away. Hotshot starting his blue buff. Link's coming back to the mid lane already. Quick Bottom pit lane stop. Bottom lane the turret. Yeah. And then they're coming back, except that, yeah, they stopped the recalls. Red buff does go to Dignitas again, but CLG are ready to keep going forward. Ready to get control here. Yeah, I don't know who made that call right there to stop the recall, but it, I think it was the right one. Cocoon does miss. Does miss. Kiwi Kid was looking for the Leon ulti. Couldn't quite find the target. Doesn't yet go in, but CLG back to the Javelin throwing gameplay. I mean, this is, this is as old school CLG as you get. Yeah, and this is about to explode because Annie's got her flash and all the CC abilities here are available. Both supports ready to pull the trigger. Crumbs waiting in that bush, trying to get cocoons off from the side. Javelin lands on a Kiwi, get decent damage there. Although I gotta say, Crumbs' smart choice grabs an Aegis early on in this game. It's a more uncommon item now, but I like the choice to pick it up, the AOE MR to help against Hotshot in the end. And the fight might just begin. Kiwi Kid not gonna land a lot there. Uh, double it, forced to flash away. Battle starts in Afro, down to half. Cruiser still in the chase. I'm a cutie by helping out as well. And down goes Afro. Tabor is gonna die as well because of that one. One for zero and dig well in the lead in this fight. They caught him out of position. Even though Kiwi Kid was not able to land the CC combo, he was able to split the team of CLG there, and they just rushed headlong into the mid. And here comes the fight. Hotshot diving Whoa. in himself. Bruce will jump right back out. Crumbs on the chase. Can Crumbs pick up Hotshot? No, he cannot. And needily survives this battle. Elise falls down, and now CLG on the chase. Does Doublelift have the damage? Does the rest of CLG even go for this one? Looks like just the one for one overall. I can't decide if that was just a brilliant hot shot bait right there, but you very rarely see AP Nidalee's jump in, Cougar mm -hmm. form into melee right there. He was able to just get out by the skin of his teeth, but yeah. it worked out in their favor. They were able to bait him in, get another kill. High risk play by Chronologic Gaming, but it gives them a kill and the mid lane tier two turret right there. Wonderful stuff. Good opening for these guys. Hot, yeah, I never mean, question Hotshot. Never question Hotshot, apparently. Super worth it. All right, so Nian with a great initiate. In leaps the AP Nidalee right in the middle. Scar comes down. Hotshot pops his barrier. Even though they use a DFG on him, they couldn't finish him off. No reset for Skara. Also, Crumb, since he was trying to follow that up, he mm -hmm. goes down really well. Collapse there by CLG. You know what's crazy about that is like, the fact that he barriered early lowered Elise's damage up, but when she went for the execute, like, the, the early barrier might have even been what saved him as part of Are you else. sure shields count as health there as far as the execute's concerned? Uh, well, that's sort of what I mean. Like, if he's low enough on health, the execute will deal more damage and will, and will ah, sort yeah, of yeah. hit harder if he had barriered later, like, to stop at least. Maybe. Oh, maybe I'm just wrong. Well, general. look what's happening nowadays. We got a giant blob of red down bottom. Double mm -hmm. lift looks at that juicy pile. Yes. He says, yes, I need to farm this, guys. I know Baron's up, and I mm -hmm. know it's a, that sort of time of the game. But just hold him off just one second so I can clear this wave. Even if they get Baron, it's worth it. You just got to say it in all chat. This all AD carries get to, do, get to do this. All right, that was classic. And you can see the spam of pings. <laughs> Everybody reacting. The, the havoc that Double Lift is causing here. Yeah, Hotshot getting chased out, but he's going to be okay in this one. Link actually Tiamat build. Interesting. I wasn't expecting that out here from Kha'Zix. But, mm, um, really? Well, I was expecting like Last Whisper or something and go for the single target burst instead of like the the sort of caster-esque build where he's using more actives. It's such a popular item on Kha'Zix because yeah. you can activate it during the flight and then clearing out, you know, any extraneous minions to help with your isolation damage. That's true. Super popular right now, especially in the jungle. It also helps your, your jungle clear. Yeah, uh, I really do like uh, the way Link is handling this jungle. He's doing pretty well. He's a little bit behind in minions, but he's overall had a really good impact on this game. It's just the one, I don't even want to say missed smite. They kind of gave it to Dignitas on a platter. Uh -oh, another missed spear, though. They need the spears to land or they can't fight. This is a very fastly dying dragon as well. Will they go for it? Yeah, Crumbs picks that one up in style. He's got the completed locket now as well. Dig aren't going to go for anywhere. Not okay. able to find his mark with the, uh, the spear. Okay, he got one, but it was on the tankiest member. 
Yeah, we're actually and a little bit late. And Hotshot feels kind of slow in his item build right now. He has enough money to there afford death cap, but he's going to be a wild till he gets Void Staff. So this tankiness that mm -hmm. Dig has in their frontliners is holding up okay to Javelin so far. And that's going to mean, you know, that crumbs build. Oh, good juke. Stun on the Hotshot as well from Kiwi Kid, but it's just going to be a disengage here. So that uh, early buy there from Crumbs rushing into the magic resist aura is really paying dividends because, like you said, not a lot of penetration there from Hotshot going to come out soon. Yeah. The weird thing for me, though, with CLG, is, is Hotshot has 2,000 gold right now. He can complete death cap, but he's choosing to stay here with the push instead of the chunkier javelins. Well, they're trying to make use of these giant minion waves that they have on the side lanes. They don't want to give up that mass pressure because if they just let it run into the dig turrets while backing off, then it's just going to be all that extra gold going right into Dignitas' pockets. They want to make use of one of them so that at least if they force Dignitas down to one side, then the other one is going to kill itself up on the top turret. Man, that's true. And look at that. CLG getting two turrets going at the same time. And this feels like a team that has really tried to practice and learn this sort of orchestration. This, this, this feels very rehearsed and not spur of the moment. Like This, this is CLG's plan. They're doing this definitely. The problem is Dignitas are just finding these scrappy fights. They're getting there for Dragons. And it's kept them in the gold lead here. But CLG, they've got to be careful here. The engages are, are available. They've got their Talisman of Ascension now, too. Both teams have the speed increase upgrade. CLG are probably going to just use it to escape. One man stun on a hot is going to flash back. But there comes Cruiser. Does he have enough there? No, he's going to have to back out right there in the end. Bouncing around, dealing some damage. Cruiser again in the front line. Afro now forced to run away. Cruise the Bruiser, cruising for a bruise, and he's going to go down. That's a kill picked up for Doublelift. Flash away from Nien. Nien's oh. going to be plopped into little pieces. And here comes Scar, but he's going to get bursted out, trading after picking up two kills. The fight back on in. Kiwi Kid picking up another for the team. Wonderful stuff there. One member alive for CLG, and that is Hotshot. That fight started off really well for CLG because Nien did exactly what he wanted. He was creating havoc in the back lines of Dignitas, and then Aphromoo went in to follow up with a nice AoE stun while the rest of the team killed Bruiser, or Cruiser. So Hotshot flashes away from the Kiwi Kid initiate, but this is what I'm talking about. Nien up top has everybody occupied while uh, CLG are able to focus down Cruiser. Afro went in for the stun and then had to run for his life. This is where it turns for Dignitas. The juke from Cutie Pie on Nien. Nien just overextends a little bit too far into the turret, and Skara goes for the resets. He gets one and is able to get off his second round of skills, which takes out Link, which is just barely enough for them to win that team fight. Even though Scar went down, he mm -hmm. got off the second Sinister Steel, able to put out enough damage in that small area that Cutie Pie was able to come back in and clean it up. Yeah, barely in time too. And that fight would have been even worse for CLG, but Hotshot landed a Javelin last second to get rid of Crumbs. So that was nearly a four for two instead of a four for three. Even still, a great fight for Dignitas. They managed to hold on to a lot of this. And CLG haven't found the new turret for a while, despite their orchestrated pushing. Dignitas are out fighting CLG. Dignitas are winning this game right now. Actually, yeah. they're ahead in gold. Yeah. Okay, so even though CLG are the ones that are making these moves, they're they're having the the shot calls for the rotations, and they're making Dignitas react to them. It's Dignitas who are ahead here. Do not forget that fact. They're up in gold. And it's a lot on Scara. Death cap now done on him as well. In fact, both these mid laners, very similar builds. They're holding very similar progressions. Death cap in there. First item was a CDR like role-defining item, the burst for Skara, the javelin span for Hotshot, and they're going towards their Void Staff now off of Sork Shoes, but Dignitas, they feel like the ones who are now in control. They're the ones pushing. He's also got that blue pot ticking, so Skara right now, huge powerhouse, the end with the initiate. Dive on into lock it popped early on as well, blocking some early damage. Looks like a uh, spider took a javelin. That is one of the problems of the uh, the Zack initiates, is that it's such a good long-range initiate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's too long even for your team to follow up on. So since Aphromoo does not have his flash, he wasn't able to stun anyone after that initiate, and CLG having to back off. Slow on the double of Ascension used to get CLG out safely, but Kiwi Kid unfortunately not hitting. He's hit, he's hit some amazingly on ults and then whiffed a whole bunch as well. We're kind of like waiting between cooldowns and Dig will be like, do we go in? Not this time. But they're looking for him a lot. I, I really like that, that he is throwing a lot of them out there, too. Because all you really need is one super good ultimate initiate onto either Link, who's usually pretty far up there, or one of the other squishy targets. Because Skara has so much damage, they can completely burst him down. And look at Crumbs down to one-third health, still taking even more damage in Doublelift. 
picks up that kill in style. The rest of Dignitas forced to run away slow onto Kiwi Kids, though. Oh and he, here comes the dive. Link's going to help pick that one up. Two for zero, and double if stolen chase has a red buff, by the way. There's the zap as well. Cutie Pie going to sweep those away with his E. It's kind of the reason why I really like the early GAs on double lift. Not because of, you know, really the item itself, but it makes his play change. It, it gives him the confidence to be on the front lines after that. Mm -hmm. Double lift, chasing them down and getting the slows from zap and red buff. Grab them the extra kill that's going to afford them this barren attempt. Oh, well, here we go. Baron is up, and it's been heavily awarded, though, by Dignitas there. Every single area of the Baron pit actually has a ward on it, and Dig wants to go in. There's the jump in by Cruiser. Scar off to the side. Doesn't find much of anything, though. Doesn't jump in at all. There we go. Finally in, but gets blown up. Double it forced to GA, but two kills so far. Double's going to revive, and they're going to go back for Baron. But now two other members of Dig have respawned. 5v3 again. Down goes I'm a cutie pie. Now three kills picked up for Counterlogic Gaming, and there's Baron. There's the CLG lead. Huge, huge pickup there for CLG. They did lose that Guardian Angel for double lift, which means they'll be prone to the resets. But great job taking advantage of the extra man that they have on the field. After those two kills, they force the objective and grab not only the Baron buff, but also the repeat kills on the remainder mem remaining members of Dig trying to stop it. Oh, well done here. Kind of logic gaming now to push on in. Still 10 seconds of five versus two. And the inhibitor is open now. Link sweeping away the minions. Double of helping to deal the damage as well. What to kill the minions first, then the inhibitor. Proper uh, priorities there for CLG double lift on the AD carry. And there we go. Inhib dead. Baron buff on CLG. Looking good for these guys. You know how much CLG are going to get out of just that one last fight? Mm -hmm. it, was <laughs> it was only two kills initially, yeah. but they changed that into the Baron, which they were also able to bait in more members of Dignitas, adding three more kills. So that's Baron, plus three more kills, plus Inhibitor Turret, because they shoved mid up after that because of their chain three kills. So that's Inhibitor Turret, plus the Inhibitor, and the Dragon. Literally everything that could be on your wish list as a League of Legends competitive team, mm -hmm. they just got, and it all started with two kills. Yeah, and Double have got some minions as well, so his wish list <laughs> also fulfilled here. Taking the toss back to sweeping out mid, though, and actually sweeping it pretty far out of their base. Though they don't have a ton of vision around the map. Just a little bit here. It's going to keep them safe for now. Dig, though, they're pulling a Fnatic. So they know they just lost so much in that last fight, and they're reverting to what is left to them. What kind of plans can we come up with? Pretty much bush ganks, because Baron's gone, Dragon's gone, our mid inhibitor is gone. What they're going to hope for now is catching people off so they can get small advantages back. At least take down a Baron buff or two, get a little bit of gold back. There's not a lot else that they can work for at this moment. Mm -hmm. They've got to wait it out. How is Double if not taking a menu wave there at bottom, though? Like, of all, of, like I completely agree with you Discipline. on the plan, right? Like, they're like, all right, Double if's going to come down to the bottom. He's been doing it all game. And he, like, doesn't show up. It's like, that's, that's incredible to me. He's changed. I mean, just I, people change. What happened Wait, to you, double lift? There are minions on the map. You should be killing them. All right, going to the bottom lane with the team this time. He's like, guys, there's someone there. I need backup. They all group up here, and they use their speed buff already, Talisman of Ascension, just to get down to bottom lift by themselves yeah. here. Now they can check that bush. There's minions to be killed. You've got to use the Ascension there active. There you go. Double lift, he's marked those minions for death. He said, I'll come back for you later. <laughs> then I'll bring my whole team, all. though. Yep, safely farming in uh, large numbers. The white's going to go down as well. Goodbye, Barry. You've died. CLG going to keep the push, though. Second tier turret on the bottom side completely disappears right there. And now the inhibitor. The siege beginning. Dignitas ready to defend. But I don't know if they can do this here. 5,000 gold deficit. they got to make the stand somewhere, though. So Dignitas still have a pretty good chance here. Uh, Skara has so much power because of the five kills that he's gotten. And the kit of Katarina here, if they're able, like we said, land just a, a CC chain onto one of these low health targets, then they can actually come back. Because if they're defending at a turret, it'll be hard for CLG to pursue them very deep into the base. It's really going to be all on Crumbs and Kiwi Kid, though, to make the play. Mm -hmm. Scar is just looking to follow up. He can't actually initiate anything himself. No, not at all. But Hotshot has finally outscaled him, though, as far as mid, mid laners are concerned and has completed the Void Staff first, and you're seeing CLG just wait and poke and deal damage to this building and look for Javelins, and slowly but surely CLG are making their way into the space. Yeah, this is a problem when you're behind against the Nidalee. Continual Spears, continual poke, 
They've got a very, very tanky Nien here, tanking tower shots, and buying double lift time to hit the turret. Another javelin's gonna land. Crumbs down to two thirds. Kiwi Kid about to half as well. Sealed here just about one second away from this turret going down. Three more attacks from double lift. There's one. That's on a champion. Two, and that turret goes down. The fight has begun. Nien in the back lines. Scar already burning the DFD. Kiwi cut. Oh my gosh, Kiwi fight. Yeah, he's gonna die. Now Scar taking a lot of pain as well. Not gonna go anywhere. Two kills picked up for CLG. And they're gonna keep on moving down. Three dead, four dead. Only Cruz with the Bruiser alive. This is gonna be CLG taking down the Nexus turrets. And the Nexus itself bringing on their first win. What? Inhibitor Inhibitors trolls. Inhibitors respond, my friend. <laughs> Soon they will get their first win, I believe. All right, so you're going to grab two inhibitors and then work on Nexus turrets. Only Cruiser survives. It's one man against the world here. One dragon, one half dragon at that. And here we go. CLG going to take down the Nexus, going to pick up their win. Doublelift, 349 minions on him. He's pretty happy with that mark. And Hotshot GG. Well played. 1-0 is the mid laner for Counter Logic Gaming. CLG may have finally found their formula. It does yep. not involve a jungler, it involves two mid laners. Yes. To send a Kha'Zix to farm jungle camps sometimes. That was the same as last season, though. They had big fat LP yeah. in the jungle. But they found the right mid laner for them at least, and the end given up. It's good, he actually has the top laner uh, lanyard. He's actually matching his own role, that's good. CLG, very well played in this game. They're gonna go out this way. Afro and everyone, high fives, thumbs up, everything. Pretty well also, played game by also guys. you know, Scar really showed up on his Katarina. Yeah, he did. And uh, there were some very nice plays, especially some baits there. Cutie Pie and Kiwi Kid, their bottom lane does look solid. Uh, there were, you know, a lot of thrown out initiates there from Kiwi Kid. Some of them really did find their mark. And yeah. then Cutie Pie baited in several times uh, a couple initiates from Africa. Yeah, the Kiwi Pie bot lane, like, it looked pretty good yeah. overall. They, they definitely held up, right? We, we saw actually some very good gank efforts as well from Crumbs and Scar. They made a lot happen as well. And, you know, Dig has always been very good at this. The early game rotations, the ganks, the making things happen. It was a close game for a while. That was exciting. It was, it was a <laughs> lot of fun. We <laughs> got to see the day. signature champions, a lot of well-played stuff. I actually, you know, Nian also pulling out the Zac. Hadn't seen him in a while. Another sort of uh, new pick, but like returning pick. Worked pretty nicely. It worked amazing, especially at the end there where he could just sit in front of the turret and tank it for the rest of the team as they took down the turret and poked at the same time. Mm -hmm. It was a good, well-rounded team. It worked well for these guys. And, of course, you saw them also play very structured. CLG, I think that's been sort of harped into them for a while by their coach. Play more structured, play more structured, focus.